Well, hello there. <laughs> Welcome to the Hidden Woman Within. It is time for a new video. I um, did not post a video last week, just been busy. So let me say this first. Um, subscribe to my channel. Give it a thumbs up if you like the content. Share it. Hit the notification bell so you'll know when I upload a video. I tend to sometimes announce it on um, Facebook, but I'm not on there that much. So if you want to know when I upload a video, hit that notification bell. All right. So with any further ado, I hope you guys are having a great day and hope that all is well in your world. And um, yeah. So uh, let's get back into what we've been talking about. One of the things, the topics that I've been on the last few videos have been, what have you come to believe about yourself? And so I'm going to continue, going to continue, <laughs> I'm going to continue that with this topic, um, your true self. And who is that really? Who are you really? So um, people have a tendency to confuse who they are with what they do. Let's say I'm a teacher a mom, a wife, a businesswoman. And all of that's part of who you are, but that's not the core of who you are. And I mentioned in another video that I didn't get to know who Charlotte was or didn't begin the journey into finding out who I was until after I became a born-again believer. It is in Christ that I found my identity. Because when you are not saved, you're, you're lost, you're out here, you're trying to figure out who you are, what to do and how to do it. And we have a tendency to try to be like somebody else because we're not sure of who we are. And so in Christ, I found my identity. I am the righteousness, righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am more than a conqueror. I am healed. I am whole. I am... I've got joy in my life. I am all those things that connect to what Christ says that I am and who Christ says that I am. Um, I've heard people say that uh, I'm trying to find myself. And uh, without Christ, we are lost. And some people say, we're trying to find God. Well, he's not lost. Before we become believers, we're the ones that's lost. And so... Um, if we don't begin to change the mindset and find out who we are, then we are lost. We stay lost by choice. And then that takes us into hiding. So, um, again, people confuse who they are with what they do. Um, we have to know what our core beliefs are. Um, and they could be real or they could be imagined. So, Wrong, think, wrong thinking leads to wrong believing and wrong believing produces wrong results. So on all points, until you get to know Christ, we're wrong, 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 and wrong. Okay. So um, there is a lot here in terms of when we want to find out about who we are. There are times when there are people that know more about us than we know about ourselves. Why? Through observation. I'll tell you something that I didn't know about myself. Um, the first time I heard it, one of my daughter-in-laws had brought that to my attention some years ago. And we were sitting around just talking, watching, watching TV mainly. And then we started talking about, I think, started talking about the movie. And um, I found everything funny everything funny. And she said, well, <laughs> mom, you tired? And I looked at her, I said, why do you say that? She said, because when you get tired, you laugh at everything. And so I kind of thought, well, I don't know, but I don't know if that's true about me. And then some years later, I was at my daughter's house and um, same thing happened. And I, I realized that I was tired after she made the comment. She said, Nana, well, Nana's tired. And I was like, what are you talking about? She said, because Nana, when you get tired, you get silly. <laughs> and I said, so I had not realized that about myself. And um, 
So they knew something about me that I didn't know about myself. So then as, as time began to go on, I noticed that had begun to change for me, that when I got tired, I got irritable. Nobody brought that to my attention because pretty much when I get tired, I'm not really around people. You know, I can get up in the morning and get going really good. And by mid afternoon, it's like, uh, mm. and I don't drink coffee in the middle of the afternoon. I probably should. Um, but, um, I just noticed that things had started to change. So it should, I should have stayed silly when I get tired instead of getting irritable. But again, I found out something about myself. So now what do I do about that? So who much is given, much is required. So when you find out about a thing, then you're responsible for that. So it can't ever be that I'm in the presence of someone and I get tired and I snap at them and use the excuse. Oh, I didn't mean to do it. I'm just tired. No, the key to that would be, what is the action behind that? I've identified that I'm tired and that when I get tired, I can get irritable. So what do I need to do about that? I need to go someplace and get some rest, whether it be take a nap, just go, you know, distance myself from people for a while or whatever I need to do so I can kind of get refreshed and renewed. So I'm not snapping at people because I'm tired. It is not anybody's fault that I'm tired. It's my own fault. Need to know when to shut things down. So when you when you learn these things about yourself, take action about them. Don't just oh that's just the way I am. No, that's not the way you are. Not necessarily. You know, I've heard a lot of people use that excuse. That's just the way that I am. Well, there are a lot of things about you that are learned behavior. Okay, so I'll go a little deeper. So you take a a man, and women do it too, because I talked about this in the video talking about abuse. That if a man physically abuses a woman, that's not just who he is. Where did that come from? He learned that from somewhere. And within that, there's something that he believes about himself. So let's just say he watched his father beat on his mother and growing up. And so in his mind, you know, I'm not sure what he could articulate, but watching that, there's there's a door that's been opened. And so there are things that uh, begin to flood him on the inside, some things that are being installed that he's not even aware of um, behind this action that he's seeing. So as he gets older, he's still living in the house with mom and dad and dad is still fighting mom. And, you know, mom hasn't decided to leave or whatever the case might be. So now this young man grows up and he thinks the way to handle a woman, if she gets out of line, is to probably punch her in the face or backhand her or something like that. Uh, again, learn behavior. So the fact that he's able to do that has said there is something about himself that he believes that that's okay to do. It's okay to slap a woman around, you know, um, it's like when little boys are growing up, I've heard women say, oh, boys don't cry. You know, we don't realize the damage that we do when we try to stuff their emotions down. Um, it's okay for little girls to cry, but it's not okay for little boys because if little boys cry, they're punks, you know. I don't know where that came from or what quote unquote man uh, put that in the man law book that if you don't, um, that you have to suck up your emotions, you you um, you don't cry, you don't show a woman your emotions and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's probably uh, a bigger issue than it has ever been because that men feel like they don't have to um, share their emotions, their feelings. You know, um, that's wrong. You need to have an outlet. So anyway, that man will begin to treat you if that's how he feels, if, if he has a poor self-image of himself, he will treat you that way. So then when the woman responds, all she's responding to is the way that you're treating her. If you're you're planting seeds when you, you know, this one thing that, that nowadays out in the world I hear, women, men calling women bees and, you know, you know what that B word is. And then women even call each other that. I'm like, um, my name is Charlotte. <laughs> and 
The most that I hear people call me is they'll call me Charlotte or they'll add Miss Charlotte. Um, I remember many, many, many years ago, someone said to me, uh, I was engaged to be married at the time. And um, this was uh, somebody in my family, actually. And um, he made the comment because he heard my uh, husband call me honey. And he made the comment. He said, yeah, it's honey now. Later on, it's going to be. And he said the B word. I said, oh, trust me. That ain't going to never happen. Trust me. I know he's not going to call me out of my name. And it wasn't so much that, oh, you don't be calling me. Out. No, I didn't have that attitude. It was the way that I carried myself. And I still carry myself that you wouldn't just come out and say that to me. And so kind of you kind of attract, you know, to yourself what's on the inside of you. So if you are timid and weak and have low self-esteem and all that kind of stuff, you attract you attract certain kind of people to that. And most times those type of people are toxic and they tend to take advantage of you. Now, you think I'm just talking about people out in the world. I'm talking about people in general, period. I was talking to a woman here a couple of weeks ago. And we were talking about this very same thing. I hadn't seen her. We was in, in the uh, foyer at Walmart. We were talking about this. And um, I don't even know how the conversation came up, but I know I had said to her, I said, well, we have a tendency to uh, show people how to treat us. And um, I said, but I'm not responsible for how somebody else treats me. I'm responsible for how they treat me. She said, oh, no, no, no. I disagree with that. She said, the minute you start calling me out my name, we're going to we don't have a problem. And I thought about that. I said, well, why would somebody call you out your name? What are you presenting to them? What, what, what side of you are you showing that would cause them to call you out your name? I have never been with a man that ever called me out of my name. And I'm not saying that I've been in so many relationships, but I'm just saying the relationships that I did had did have, nobody ever called me the B word you know, or, you know, nobody ever called me that. I mean, I wasn't treated the best, but I'm just saying, I, I, I don't ever remember being called something like that. Um, well, I, I'll do, I'll, I'll say this when we were in high school and I'm not all over the place. I'm still where I'm supposed to be. And back in the day, if a guy tried to talk to you and you didn't give him the time of the day, he called you a hoe. Oh, you ain't nothing but a hoe anyway. I'm like, if I'm that big of a hoe, how come you can't get nothing? Yeah, I said that on this channel. I did. I did. But anyway, I'm making a point. So um, the deal is, guys, we got to find out who we are. And again, until you become a born again believer, you don't really know who that is. We were all created with this. Um, I'm going to call it a God hole. There, there is a, a empty spot, an empty place in the soul of every human being when they're born, that the only one that can fill that is Jesus. He is the only one. And so what do we do? We begin to look for, <laughs> easiest way to say it, begin to look for him in all the wrong places and all the wrong things. We're looking to fill that void that we have, but we tend to fill it with drugs, alcohol, relationships, all, you know, all kind of crazy stuff. Somebody was trying to call me. Um, and so, um, but the real deal is it can only be filled with the love of Christ. And so um, that comes back to our core belief. You know, who, who, who do we, who are we? It was like, you know, we could talk about God all day long. But the minute you mention that name, there's something about that name, Jesus. People will get all up in a roar. They'll argue and fuss with you about this and about that. It's like we'll say, who do you, who do you say that I am? And that's Jesus asking. And this is what we heard on Sunday, which we had a, a speaker at our church. And I would say he's a guest speaker, but he's not because he's just as much as home there as I am. And he was, he was talking about that very same thing. He was talking about from Matthew chapter 16, you know, when Jesus says, well, who do you say that I am? 
And he went into all the teaching about, you know, the false gods and how they, you know, had all these, you know, hundreds and hundreds of gods. And, and Jesus went right there where they worshiped all these gods. And he asked, who do you say I am? And so um, in the same breath, it's like when you're dealing with yourself, you got to find out who you are. Who do you say you are? Find out what that is and get to know you. And when you get to know you, you get to know Christ. And, you know, because when we believe crazy things about ourselves, we have these, these, um, these things that we believe, like I said earlier, is either real or imagined. You need to figure out where they came from and then begin to deal with that. Like when I was in kindergarten, you know, the message that I got that day was be quiet. Excuse me. Um, what you have to say isn't important. And for, for many, many years, I was. I won't say I was quiet. I was withdrawn because I felt like what I had to say wasn't important. And it took me a lot of years to figure out um, that very thing. What, you know, why did I not open my mouth when people were saying things to me? Um, I've had females call me out of my name, but I've never really had a man to call me out of my name. So, um, you know, a female would just pretty much get up in my face. And, you know, at sometimes, you know, there was a couple of times that presented itself that, that, that happened and I didn't say anything. Well, I'm not the same person today and I'm not going to say, oh, I wish you would. No, that's not, you know, I don't give anybody a reason to get up in my face, but the enemy doesn't really need a reason. But if somebody jumped up in my face today and started talking all smack to me, I'd have to walk away because simply, simply because they don't know me and it would be like they would be trying to provoke me. And then I would have to begin to look at what's behind that and not look at the person. And, you know, that's the one command that Jesus has given us is to walk in love. And I know a lot of people, you know, I was recently talking to somebody, he was talking about what he was going to do and how he was going to do it. And I'm like, that's, that's, that's not who we are as believers. That's not who we're supposed to be as Christians. I don't ever want to put myself in a position now where I think that I would fight somebody or slap somebody if they got up in my face. That's, that's not who I am. I mean, I'd rather walk away from you than, you know, ruin my witness for Christ because who knows? One day I might have to minister the word to you, but if I don't slap the fire out of you, <laughs> you don't want to hear anything I have to say. So um, it's it's important. It's important that we begin to take that journey to find out who we are, and um, that journey begins with Christ. So um, Y'all have to forgive me. I'm trying to record and um, I'm getting calls and all that kind of stuff. And uh, one call that I have to take, it's a, a important call I have to take. So I'm going to end the video here. I just wanted to come back and touch base with you and, uh, you know, put a video up and um, we'll go deeper into this another time. But I'm thinking for now, this just might be it. You know, we I'm not going to continue on this because there's other content that I have that I want to share. So take that journey, find out who you are, who you are in Christ first. If you're a Christian, if you're not a born again, if you're not a born again believer, then there's a remedy for that too. All right, y'all, I'm going to say, um, have a good day and um, we'll chat again soon. So not next week, but the following week, I'll have another Hidden Woman video up for your viewing. Have a good night.